Hi, I'm Alyssa Lozon, Head of Youth Services. And I'm Corin Stemmers, the Director at Cary Library. Uh, we're here to tell you about the Children's Room Project. You may have heard about CHIRP. We've been talking about it for a few years, and this year we will be bringing the project to town meeting, asking the community for investment in our youth services uh, for the years to come. Uh, as you may be aware, this library opened in its current form in 2004, but it was actually designed in the late 90s, and there are many things that we would do differently if we were designing this library today. Uh, there are issues with the safety and security of this room. There are issues with the accessibility in this room. Um, and there are issues with having enough power and flexibility and spaces that are large enough to accommodate the types of programs that we do today. We're often asked about why we need this and we're hopeful that, that what we're gonna share with you today will answer some of those questions for you. So buildings designed in the 1990s were meant to be warehouses for books. As you can see, these shelves are super tall and super close together. This cart that we use to shelve books has a really hard time getting down this aisle. Now imagine if you were a user in a wheelchair or a mom with a stroller trying to push your child down this aisle. It is very difficult to do. Some of the things that we are hoping to fix with this project is to spread these aisles out, lower these aisles so that the users of this collection, the picture books, who are our youngest users, can browse a little bit more independently. As Corin mentioned in our intro, safety and security has changed in public buildings. And there are a lot of places in our children's room that we just can't see when we are working at the desk. I've asked my colleague to go sit in the preschool play space. As you can see, I cannot see her. We cannot see about 50% of the children's room when we are working at our desks. Hey Susan, where are you and what are you doing? I'm over in the play space building with Legos. Our other major blind spot is behind me in our nonfiction and then even further, our graphic novel area, which is where a lot of our elementary school students spend a lot of time because our graphic novels is one of our highest circulating collections. And we cannot see that collection at all. Susan, Susan, can you hear me? Were you calling me? I didn't hear you because I was in graphic novels. Another area of the room that needs help is our restrooms. You may notice that we have raised thresholds that make it really difficult for individuals and wheeled devices to get into the rooms. Uh, the turning radius, while ADA compliant, is really uncomfortable for anybody using a wheelchair or even a double wide stroller. And um, basically the rooms are, are dark and well-worn after 20 years. One of the components of our new space that we're really excited about is that one of our restrooms will feature a universal changing table that will allow everyone who uses the library to, to use the restroom with dignity. Welcome to our story time room. As we mentioned in the beginning of the video, the children's room was originally designed in the mid to late 1990s and how children used the library was very different back then. When you came to a story time, you came, you sat on the floor, you sat quietly, the librarian read you some stories, you left the story time, you picked out your books, and you left the library. That is not how children learn, or what we know about early literacy, the best early literacy practices today. Story times today are much more energetic and much more interactive. They're filled with songs and movements and stories. Also, our story times are much larger today than they were in the mid-90s. So we have outgrown this room for our story times. Most of our story times are now happening across the hall in the large meeting room, which is unfortunately too big for most of our story times. So we have a little bit of a Goldilocks problem. We have a room that is too small and a room that is too big. We're hoping with our new children's space to have designed a story time room that is just right, that we can bring back more of our story time rooms to the story time room, which would be best suited for what happens in that space. In addition, this space also really is only able to, at this point, accommodate our book clubs. It is set up right now for one of our elementary school book clubs. We used to do a science club before the pandemic. One of the reasons that we stopped that program is because this room doesn't have enough room for more than maybe 10 kids to move about it. So we can't do a lot of those interactive programs anymore in this space. We don't have the flexibility to do a lot of the types of programming that we want to do and that the kids want to see in this space. 
Um, so we're hoping between the new story time space that we're creating in our new children's room and the changes that we're making to the large meeting room to increase our flexibility for different types of programming for children and adults of all ages. The large meeting room is also being redesigned as part of this project. Uh, as you can see, it's set up for a lecture today, which is what the room does well and what it was designed for back in the late 90s. But today we use the room for all sorts of programs. We start in the morning with preschool dance party. Later in the day, it may be used for teens with craft programs. And in the evening, we may have a cooking demonstration. And we just need a space that's going to function better. One of the biggest changes to the large meeting room and really important to making the different kinds of programming we're doing possible is a renovation to our kitchen. Currently, we have a simple uh, kitchenette, like you would see at a hotel, that is good for coffee service and not much else. But with the type of science and cooking and creative programming that we're doing, we're gonna be transforming that space into a kitchen with full teaching capabilities that will allow us to help these programs come alive. Another change we'll be making to this room is a complete overhaul of the room's technology. During the pandemic, we took a lot of our programming online and what we've heard from our, our patrons is that you still want to be able to attend our programs virtually, but this room isn't set up to do that. We'll be installing full hybrid capability in the room. We'll be replacing our cochlear hearing loop in the space and adding other things that will allow for all the different uses we've, we have planned. I wanna close by talking about the HVAC piece of this project. As you know, the library's HVAC system is reaching end of life and the lower level HVAC system will be replaced as part of the project and unfortunately is responsible for nearly half the cost of the overall project. On the bright side, we'll have a new green energy system on that lower level, an electric system, and a few years up the road, uh, once we get beyond the Lexington High School project, we will replace the remaining HVAC system with green energy. I wanna close by saying that if you're interested in more information about this project, we have a huge website devoted to information about CHIRP. If you go to the library's website at carrylibrary.org slash CHIRP, you'll find our project page that has diagrams, design documents for those of you who want more. And then finally, uh, to everyone out there in the community who has invested in this library in the past, in the present, uh, we hope that you'll invest in us again for the future and um, thank you.